Has anyone ever been to a wedding where someone actually objected? And if so, how did that go? Story 1. Kind of. My uncle was getting married. Small, just a handful of family and a minister. I was videotaping. My grandmother was not into it at all. With each line spoken by the minister, she had a cutting, sarcastic response. I couldn't believe it, it was so unlike her. When that part came up, she said, I object, but does it really matter? They're gonna do it anyway. The minister just ignored her and proceeded. Business as usual. They were divorced within a year. I wish I had a copy of that video. We now have a Discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story 2. I had a friend who was a minister, and the subject came up if he asked the question during ceremonies he officiated. He laughed and said, no way. He basically tells the couple not to include it, because it only invites a moment of anxiety at best, and misery at worst. His best story, and one of the reasons he stopped including the question, was a couple where the lead-up to the wedding, the couple was very obviously in love. The bride-to-be was very smiley and happy. Day of the wedding, she's stone-faced. He knows something is up, because he's never seen her like this, and he asks her if she's okay. I'm fine. Right before the service, he asks again. I'm fine. He gets to the question, does anyone object to this union? The bride reaches over, grabs the maid of honor, shoves her into the bride's spot, and says, you're screwing him, you marry him, and then stormed out of the church. Story 3. This was in America, and the wedding was in a Buddhist temple. Parents of the groom stood up and objected because they didn't believe the bride was of the same class. They spoke in another language, so most of the English-speaking guests didn't know they were objecting. My husband was the best man, and those closest to the couple knew this might happen. The Buddhist priest said he would handle it if the parents tried anything. After the parents spoke for a while, the priest said to the groom, You've heard what your parents had to say. What do you want to do? The groom replied, I want to marry my bride. So the priest asked the parents to leave. At this point, the rest of the guests are cluing in that this was not a nice part of the ceremony, and that the parents were actually objecting. So, as the parents walked out, some of the guests were berating them, saying things like, You should be ashamed of yourself, and how could you do that? And even though the groom was not happy with his parents, that was very hard for him to hear. That was 30 years ago, and the couple is still married. They have two beautiful, successful children. After the groom's mom passed away, the groom's father came around and was involved in their lives until he died. Story 4. At his rehearsal dinner, a co-worker's mother's toast included that his soon-to-be wife was a damn dirty strumpet who wasn't good enough for her son. Folks, not happy. Video ended, so I didn't get to see the whole thing. At the wedding, which I did attend, his mom started to say something at the speak now part, but was silenced by her daughter. Mom left and didn't see the rest of the ceremony. Everything about that poor guy was drama. Story 5. My friend's mother-in-law made a speech at the wedding, which included, Now y'all can go bang all night. You don't gotta wait no more. You ain't gotta sweet talk her up no more, baby boy. You can just take her up whenever you like. In the most jealous tone I have ever heard. It was unsettlingly bizarre. She didn't object to the marriage, but we all objected to her. Also, before anyone assumed she was drunk, it was a dry wedding. Story 6. I don't know if it's a UK thing, or even just a one specific church thing, but I was told by the priest in a rehearsal that if someone objects, even as a joke, the priest is required to pause the ceremony and talk to the objector alone, in order to discuss their concerns and decide if they have a valid objection. Like, it's not a fun, jokey moment, it's a real legal part of the ceremony. He also said it used to be custom that if you raised an invalid objection, then you had to pay for the wedding. Story 7. I feel like about half the weddings these days don't have that part, and not because of the feared objections, it's just outdated and kinda weird. Premarital banging is a thing. Divorce is a thing. Weddings cost like over $10,000. If you know reasons to stop a marriage outside of movies, you need to intervene at the engagement or earlier, not during the ceremony. That said, one of my wife's college roommates cancelled a wedding like a day or two days beforehand right after graduating college after being in a long-distance relationship with some guy for a year or so. Her family was quite well off, and she was dating a guy who lavished gifts and expensive dates on her whenever they were together, said he ran his own company, just bought them a fancy house, all that stuff. It turns out, he was just super, super in debt. He worked a near-minimum-wage job and maxed out credit cards taken out fraudulently. He had a fake webpage with other employees for his company that he set up for the sole purpose of keeping up the front. The house was only bought from grossly lying about income, pre-2007 housing crisis, on the mortgage application, and he was just drowning in debt. The almost bride's father got bad vibes about the guy. A few things didn't add up, like he had this fancy house but couldn't afford any furniture, stuff like that. 
so he hired a PI who quickly uncovered the deception. And she didn't break up because he wasn't rich, she broke up because he spent tons of effort to lie about everything and was completely conning her and just trying to get her roped into joint ownership of his debt via marriage that he expected the family to pay off. Story 8. Not a wedding, but a funeral someone objected the death to. At my uncle's funeral, his ex-wife and a local church, cult, leader tried to raise him from the dead. We were all sitting there like normal people at a normal funeral, and she walks up to the casket and starts yelling, James Lester, raise up! I didn't know she was there, or I would have prepared myself for shenanigans. Also, I didn't know my uncle's middle name was Lester, so please imagine the confusion. So she and the cult leader are literally yelling at my uncle's body. Not surprisingly, my uncle refused to resurrect himself. They were escorted out. I've never told this story before because it makes my family look insane. Story 9. My mother passed away about 15 years ago. Five years later, my dad married my now stepmother. It was an outdoor wedding on a beautiful sunny day, and during the spot where they usually ask if anyone objects, a big gust of wind came out of nowhere and knocked over some tables. Afterward, multiple people came to tell me that wind gust was my mother objecting, which I like to believe was true. Story 10. I was the best man at my bestie's wedding. Someone that we tolerated in our friend group objected, and he said he was in love with the bride and that he was the only one that could make her happy. She had been nice about his feelings until then and reminded him in front of the entire ceremony that A. He couldn't hold down a job because he had too big of an ego. B. Didn't get along with her friends because they all had something they were working on, a book, a career, a trip, volunteer job, and he had nothing, so he constantly tried to downplay their accomplishments. And C. His idea of banging was, blow me and I'll finger you. Night, hon. She was way more thorough and more crude and cruel, and it was a hysterical five-minute ordeal. I mean, come on, he had it coming for starting stuff at her wedding. He got up and left. I was pretty sure he was crying as he walked away, but no one went after him. It was both brutal and hilarious. He was like the, the Jar Jar Binks of our friend group. You hated him, but he made you feel better, because at least you weren't as bad as Peter. Story 11. I was not at the wedding, but I know of a case where there was an objection, and the circumstances were quite exceptional. When I was a detective with the Child Protection and Sexual Offenses Unit, we dealt with a case involving a 14-year-old girl who had been assaulted by a known adult male. The first disclosure of the assault was made by her at his wedding ceremony, which she attended uninvited. When the pastor asked if there were any objections, she rose and said, yes. She had an objection. The groom had assaulted her a week before. The pastor stopped proceedings and took the child to an adjacent office, where she repeated the allegation and gave more information. Shockingly, the bride was still willing to go through with the ceremony, which was concluded while the girl waited in the office. Afterwards, the pastor took her to the local police station, Belleville South in Cape Town, South Africa, where a case was open and the matter assigned to my unit for investigation. We carried out the arrest at the V&A waterfront, Cape Town, the next evening, Sunday, where the groom and his friends were partying it up. The bride, of course, was left home alone one day after the wedding. I was blown away by the courage it took for the girl to attend the wedding ceremony alone, surrounded by the friends and family of the perp, and to make the disclosure to his face in the way she did. For those wondering how she knew so much about him and when he was going to be married, he lived in close proximity to the girl's family in Belleville South, and the two families knew each other. He had siblings who attended school with her. Story 12. I was at one. Didn't know what happened as I was in the back. The bride runs out to the limo, her family after her. I said to the person next to me, cold feet. She's like, oh no, I thought this might happen. Her ex is here. We went outside. He'd apparently come into a lot of money. He came to the side door, front of the church, said he objected because he's rich and wants her back. She paused too long for the groom's liking, and he said, screw you both. She ran. Last I saw, they were at the limo with her. She was crying. Have no idea how it ended, but there was no wedding. We went to the reception. No bridal party. We ate, drank, danced, and left. Story 13. This will sound absolutely stupid, but when I was a kid, my deeply religious aunt had her wedding at a local church. During the objection part, lightning struck very near to the church. I remember to this day how the following thunder was so loud that the fancy windows of the church started rattling. Well, the timing of the strike was very unfortunate for my uncle because my aunt took this as a sign of God objecting to her marriage and called the wedding off on the spot. Needless to say, they married on the same day a year later and this time without the objection from God. They're still married to this day. Story 14. My best friend and I, males, drew somewhat apart during college and then grew closer after college. He fell into a group of friends who were a little wilder than me. 
I don't blame him. College is supposed to be fun. I missed out. That's my fault because I did a five-year program that got me my BA and MBA in short order. After school ended, he was asked by a new friend to be his best man. I knew the guy and his fiancée secondhand. He was a bit of an ogre, but she was cute, a, a bit mousy. I wasn't at his wedding, but the big day comes and we all go about our lives. It was the 90s and I worked that Saturday. Yes, office space culture was real then. I go out to our watering hole that night and there was my best friend drinking a double whiskey in a disheveled tux. Good wedding? How was the reception grub? I asked. No wedding. No reception. I ate dinner at Applebee's by myself, he said. The bride told the limo driver to take her for a few big laps. She eventually showed, gathered her family around her, and told the groom it wasn't happening today or ever. The physical and mental abuse was too much, and she was too far into a drug habit he pushed on her and was going to seek help. Now, understand, only a few at the wedding knew any of the abuse or drug abuse that was going on. The ogre went into a rage and tried to attack her, and got repelled by the better men and women in the crowd. She got her help and self-confidence back and married a great guy a few years later. Three kids and almost 30 years together. Her would-be husband kept up his bad habits and ended up killing his girlfriend and himself in a drug-fueled murder-suicide in our 30s. Still shocks me to this day. My best friend has been pretty much straight and narrow since it sobered him up in many ways. Story 15. I used to make wedding videos. Did one at an outdoor wedding spot high on one side of a valley. It had rained earlier in the day, but the storms had cleared and the wedding would continue. During the vows, I don't touch the camera, just step back and let it run. So I'm spaced out waiting for the vows to finish and notice a radio tower far across the valley. Suddenly, lightning strikes the radio tower. I had enough time to think, boy, when the thunder gets here, it'll probably be loud. I also had enough time to clue in that the minister was saying, If anyone objects to this union, let him speak now or forever. Kerblam! Total silence in the venue. Preacher takes a second to look around and make sure everyone is alright. No one has been smote. Well, that's never happened before. As far as I know, they're still married. That was ten or more years ago. Story 16. I have a really weird family. Half of my family, my dad's side, are East Coast wasps. We're talking tweed jackets, prep schools, taking a brandy in the study, riding lessons, the whole kit and caboodle. The other half of my family, my mom's sides, are East Texas hillbillies. I have an uncle who's gotten a DUI while riding a four-wheeler in two separate incidents. I have a cousin who is currently in prison because he tried to rob the tropical fish store where he worked, and they arrested him when he tried to come in for his next shift. I went to a wedding of a cousin of mine from the hillbilly side once. First off, I never knew the does anyone object to this union thing was real. I thought that was stuff they do on TV. Anyway, when the preacher asked that, the bride's mother made some noise and then excused herself, leaving the ceremony. She didn't say she objected or anything, but she definitely made some weird noise at a super inopportune time and then stood up and walked out. My aunt, the groom's mom, took that as a sign of disrespect and left to confront her. Yes, you heard that right. In the middle of her son's wedding vows, she decided to leave to go confront the bride's mother for making a noise. Oh, I am, I am not proud of these people. The ceremony ends and the bride and groom are being ushered out of the church and into a limo to take them to their reception. And out in the parking lot, my aunt and the bride's mother are locked up like two wrestlers. Then I hear someone shout, oh come on, y'all just quit it. And I turn around to see my uncle and the bride's father are now fighting in the foyer of the church. And it's the preacher who's trying to break them up. To the surprise of absolutely frickin' no one, that marriage lasted two whole years. Story 17. My buddy wasn't fully rejected at the altar, which sounds weird, but I'll explain. Without too much of back-in-the-day talk, I'll just say that the groom was slash is a good friend of mine I'd known since middle school. He'd met this awesome gal, and they were slated to be married in our then-early 30s. Come the wedding day, and it's almost a high school reunion of sorts. We attended a smallish private school. Everyone is stoked to see our grade school pal get married. We're all seated outside waiting for the bride to come out, and a reasonable amount of time goes by. People are just carrying on, catching up, etc. I've got a flask and I'm sharing it with people. The groom goes inside to see what's up. More time goes on, and then some more. Then my flask is empty and I want to go reload it at the car, but think better of it. Then the groom comes back out to address everyone and lets us know that this isn't happening today. The bride doesn't want to go through with it. We're still together and everything, but now isn't the time. Then goes on to encourage everyone to eat the food. It's already paid for and stuff. Here we are about five years later and they're still together, but not married. No harm, no foul, I guess. Story 18. 
I used to work at a fancy stately home as a waitress. Most of my shifts were weddings. This guy's objection was a bit untimely, but what happened after was even better. So, the actual wedding happened at a church nearby, and after they'd had the reception with us. This guy rocks up after the actual ceremony to declare his undying love for the bride, and told the groom and entire wedding party that he'd been sleeping with the bride. Cue tears and drama, blah blah blah. He's obviously chucked out of the wedding, and it turns out he'd gotten an invite for the evening only, and thought he was coming to object at the actual ceremony. The groom forgave the bride, he was total wet lettuce, and they're both crying and hugging outside. The party carried on and all was great, until someone overheard the chief bridesmaid talking to her friend about the fact that she had also been sleeping with the bride. This prompted the grandmother of the groom, about 75 years old, to punch the bride in the face. The groom apparently forgave the bride again as they went home together. I'm guessing he knew she was a hoe bag and wasn't really that surprised. As I'm here, I'll give you a two for one. Same place. Literal weeks after the first wedding. We have a wedding where the groom's family are clearly loaded and full of their own self-importance. Especially the groom's mother, who gave us hell in prep. Nothing was good enough, kept changing how she wanted things, talked to us like scum, and made it very clear that her family are of a better class of people than the bride's family, who were really nice and down to earth. Anyway, halfway through the evening, someone's handbag goes missing. The groom's mother stormed into the kitchen, demanding that the manager search all our bags and saying she was calling the police on us thieving scumbags. Manager tells her, more politely than I would've, to calm down and not make assumptions. He has security search the place. They go into the men's toilets and I can see a guy stood in the stall with his back against the door. I guess they could see his feet. Initially, he refuses to come out, but eventually he does. He had two women's handbags in there that he'd been wanking into. He was also off his mind on drugs. The guy was the groom's brother. This annoying lady who accused all of us of stealing. Oh, her face when she found out was amazing. She picked up her stuff and left right away. Police came and the guy was arrested. Story 19. Not at the exact moment when the question, does anyone object, is typically asked, but still. I was the best man for my wife's brother, which was odd and a whole different story, when he married his wife. They're good people, however, extremely misguided and insanely disrespectful of everyone else's time. To provide an example of this, they were late to their own 300-guest wedding at a very lavish venue, which shocked none of the immediate family, but still. Anyway, we're about 20 minutes into the outdoor ceremony on a very beautiful summer day when a car slowly drives past. The passenger of the car rolls down his window and screams, Don't freaking do it! Prompting laughter from the majority of the 300 plus in attendance, myself included. A normal couple would have taken this in stride, had a quick laugh and moved on. But did my brother-in-law and his wife? No. They both cried and claimed that their fairy tale day was ruined. The rest of the night was fairly uneventful, save for some cringy moments. The bridal party stayed on site at the venue, but was informed that another wedding was taking place the next day and we all needed to check out by 11 a.m. Not unreasonable at all. What time did my brother-in-law and his wife wake up? 12 p.m. Story 20. We were attending the wedding of my wife's co-worker, F38. When the priest asked for objections, a younger guy stood up and started walking down the aisle and objected in tears. He was confessing his love for her, and when reaching the couple, he started begging her not to go through with it. Two of the groomsmen and an older gentleman escorted the younger guy from the building. Afterwards, we found out that this was their next-door neighbor who was apparently infatuated with her and at one time had been caught several times on their security camera peeping on her over their privacy fence as she sunbathed in her yard. The older gentleman who helped escort him out was his deeply embarrassed father. This young man had been in and out of mental health facilities over the last three or four years. It was a sad deal. Story 21. Was at a wedding when I was 19. Full-blown Victorian style and everything. I was a bridesmaid and the minister said, does anyone object to this union? The bride's father stands up and gets the yes, I, out, before the bride's mother whacks him with her walking stick and says, Seamus, you sit your fat arse down before we have a wedding and a funeral. 400 people went from dead silent to trying to muffle their laughter while the bride is glaring at her dad. After the ceremony, the parents of the bride, who were very Scottish, were standing off to the side and I overheard her mom, who was all of five feet tall, threatening her very large father. Dude was easily six foot six and cowering as his wife went off on him about how that was not funny, and if he had ruined her baby girl's big day, she would have sent him back to his own mother in a box. 
Story 23. Not at the wedding, but at the rehearsal dinner. Two girls I knew from college were getting married. Drunk grandma from down the street, not really anyone's grandma, but she had that demeanor, started shouting in the middle of dinner that they couldn't do it. She, one of the couple, had a man over. All. The. Time. He stayed all night. She's not like that. She likes men. You can't do it. She got shushed and kept yelling, and finally the other girl yelled back at her, That's my brother! We're trying to get pregnant! Which shut the whole table down. So, drunk grandma took a beat, then said, kind of weakly, Well, that's not how you do it. And the girl in question said, I'm pretty sure it is. And the whole table just cracked up. The tension broke. We were falling down laughing. Every time drunk grandma tried to interject, it was just funnier and funnier. The look on her face when she realized that, yes, this girl was also banging with a man who had a dong, and also that was fine and okay, and no one was mad, her expression was just precious. She tried to leave, but she'd driven there with someone. So she just stood outside for ten minutes, right outside the restaurant window, about three feet from the table, looking down the road hopefully, like a horse and carriage were going to appear and whisk her off. My only part in all of this was to call her an Uber and get her home at this point. I felt bad for her and she was putting a damper on things. Anyway, they did indeed get pregnant within six months or so. Fat-faced little guy is about four now. He looks just like both of them. And apparently there was no drama with the wife and the brother. He's a nice guy and just took a job in the Middle East.